During the First World War, women's football increased in popularity, and perhaps the biggest star of this increasing popularity was Lily Parr. Parr was an icon and refused to be grounded down by the rules that were put in place to ban women's football, and also served as a voice for the LGBT community. This is the story of Lily Parr, a footballing icon. Lily Parr was born on the 26th of April 1905 in St Helens, Lancashire. As a child, she was uninterested in the activities girls were expected to undertake, such as sewing and cookery. Her robust frame, combined with the help of her brothers, allowed her to develop her sporting ability, and she would play alongside boys in both football and rugby. Parr joined St Helens Ladies in 1919, and they would play a friendly game against Dick Kerr's Ladies, a local factory team. Although St Helens would lose 6-1, the 14-year-old Parr would catch the eye of Dick Kerr's coach, Arnold Franklin. Franklin would offer Parr and her teammate Laura Woods a spot in the team and jobs in the factory. At the time of the First World War, many factories were short-staffed, and so women were hired to fill the spaces left behind. During lunch breaks, they would kick a ball about, just as the male workers had done, and this led to teams such as Dick Kerr's being formed. This led to a rise in the popularity of women's football teams. Lily Parr would net an incredible 43 goals in her first season, before she had even turned 16. A local newspaper said there was not a greater football prodigy across the country. Parr also broke the mould when a male goalkeeper condescendingly told her she couldn't beat him from the spot. Parr accepted his challenge and hit a shot at the goalkeeper so powerfully that it broke his arm. Parr continued to impress, and in December 1920, 53,000 fans would attend Goodison Park to see Dick Kerr's ladies face St Helens. Dick Kerr's would win 4-0, whilst a further 12,000 fans would be stuck outside trying to get in. Franklin would also take his team on the Tour of France in 1920, and in 1921 the team would play 67 games, also representing England in victories over Scotland and Wales. Parr's fine form continued, with her netting five in a 9-1 win over a Best of Britain outfit and all five in a 5-1 win over the French national side. As they were all still maintaining full-time jobs whilst playing, Parr and her teammates felt a strong connection with the working class. They would often play matches to raise funds for local workers, including out-of-work miners. They set up a game to raise funds for former soldiers to buy food for Christmas, and Winston Churchill would allow two anti-aircraft searchlights to be provided to the game so that it could be floodlit and allow an evening crowd. Miners continued to be in dispute with the authorities, and benefit games would keep taking place to raise funds, but this was not to the liking of the FA. The FA was appalled by what it saw as the female footballers getting involved in national politics, and they were also scared that the rising popularity of women's football threatened the men's game. The FA declared that football was unsuitable for females, and ruled that women's football could not take place at major venues, as well as barring FA members from officiating women's matches. Whilst Parr's hopes and dreams of a professional career were dead at the age of 16, her and her teammates would not let the ruling stop them. The team would continue to play football by any means necessary, and they would go on a tour of North America. Dick Kerr's would impress on their tour, losing only three of their nine games, and Parr received plaudits for her performances, with an American newspaper calling her the most brilliant female player in the world. Whilst in America, Parr and three of her teammates would also take on the US Women's Olympic relay team in a quarter of a mile race. Parr and her teammates would emerge as the victors. In 1926, Dick Kerr's factory would be overtaken by English Electric, and many staff were made redundant. But as the team had raised a great deal of money for Whittingham Hospital and Lunatic Asylum, several players were offered jobs there. Parr would retrain as a nurse, and continue working at the hospital after her retirement from football. It was here where Parr would meet her future partner, Mary. The two fell in love, and made no efforts to hide their companionship, even buying a house together, a significant statement at a time where so many LGBT couples were ostracised. Dick Kerr's were renamed as Preston Ladies. Parr would continue to play for them for many years, while several of the teammates she grew up playing with slowly started to leave the sport behind. 
1946, Pearl was named captain of Preston in recognition of a years of service. She would continue playing for four more years, with her last game coming against Scotland, where Parr scored a goal in an 11-1 win. Afterwards, Parr would retire from football at the age of 45. Parr's stats were phenomenal. In 1950, Alfred Franklin calculated that Preston ladies had played 643 games and only lost nine, whilst also raising £140,000 for charity. It was also reported that Parr had scored 967 goals out of a team's 3,022 over the years. Parr continued to work at the hospital until the early 1960s. A lifelong smoker, she would develop cancer and underwent a double mastectomy in 1967. She would pass away from cancer in 1978 at the age of 73. Before she passed away, Parr would live to see the ban on female teams playing in large stadiums overturned in 1971. Lily Parr remains an icon for female footballers and the LGBT community. She was inducted into the English Football Hall of Fame in 2002, and in 2019, a statue of her was built at the National Football Museum to recognise her achievements. It made her the first ever female footballer to be commemorated with a statue. Lily Parr was a huge part of the growth of football. She did not let the rules and conventions of the time stop her from living her life as she continued to put her unique footballing ability to use even after her dreams of turning professional were lost, and she didn't let the ostracisation of homosexuals in society stop her from ending up with the woman she loved. Lily Parr was an admirable character, never afraid to stand up for what she believed in, and helped use her footballing ability to make a difference to so many people's lives through fundraisers, as well as serving as an inspiration to young female footballers to this day. She is one of the most important figures in football history, as she truly showed that football is for everyone.